This is every nut and bolt. I replaced every nut and bolt on the car. A lot of these bolts aren't original because they were from the last restoration. I replaced every nut and bolt on the car and to see, curious to see how many it would be. Look right here, look at this. That's every nut and bolt and washer on an entire MGB minus a couple very small specialty fasteners. And look at that. <laughs> the experience of driving this car is unlike any car that you can get today. You listen to it, you maintain it, it talks to you. It sounds unlike any other car because it's not electronically controlled. It has no computer system. You know, it, it uh, runs different when it's cold than when it's warm. You have to put the choke on. You have to do a lot of different things that you don't do to a regular car. I'm within 10 minutes of the most beautiful backcountry roads you can ever think of. I live right here, I, I was, I'm so lucky. So I know all the roads around here. I, mean, I know every little minuscule back road there is. Well, you know, I had my first car that I ever had when I was um, 15 years old, it was a uh, 65 MGB. I took auto shop in high school and enjoyed the car, and I made the unfortunate mistake of selling that car. After the kids were growing up and they all went off to college and they got married and they left, I had to have that car back. Building it is just as fun as driving it, and um, it becomes really a, a really a part of your life. Because it costs a lot of money to restore a car, you can't afford to have it half done. The big, the worst thing that happens is people start a restoration project and don't finish it. So the, the main thing is you have to not fail. A car restoration takes two years, one person job, pretty full time. You know, so the first thing is make sure that you have a source of financing so the money doesn't slow you down. Because the longer you take to finish the restoration project, the better chance you have of not finishing it because life changes. People get married, they get divorced, they move, they lose their jobs. Life changes. And those kinds of life changes can interrupt the restoration project. Well, building a car is a craft. I mean, it's, it's, it's really old school craftsmanship that's a lot different than just mechanical work. Reupholstering seats, laying down carpet, uh, doing body work, replacing windshield glass, you know, rebuilding fuel pumps or differentials. So many different jobs that you have to learn. Well, nobody's an expert in all those areas. How could you possibly be? You can't. So that means you have to take each job and you have to research the heck out of it and find out what are the ways that people have failed and what do you do to prevent that failure. People think, oh, it's overwhelming. Oh, it's so much and I, I can't do it. Well, you need, to, you need to break it down into small jobs. It's all it is is a bunch of five minute jobs. 
you know, all this is 20,005 minute jobs. So you take like one job will be, okay, all I have to do is put on, install the windshield in the frame. That's not a big job, it might be hard, but it's not like restoring a whole car. So you study that and you do that. You put, you put it aside, then you do another job. Oh, I gotta rebuild the rear end. Oh, you study that. You get the tools you need and you study it and you do it. Maybe you have to do it over again. Maybe you ruin some parts. It doesn't matter. It's still much cheaper than having someone else do it. And then you put that rear end aside. And then you do the whole front clip. Put it aside. Reupholster the seats. Put them aside. Once you build every component of the car and they're done, then you can build the car in like two months. The other 22 months was building all the separate components. So let's say you're doing, a, let's say you're gonna rebuild the whole front end. Now if that job seems overwhelming, then you break it down farther. Okay, well the only job I have to do is get this one nut off. That won't come off. That's an easy job, that's not overwhelming. Get this nut off. Okay, go research it online. Go study what people use. What did they do? Do that one little job. So you break it down into smaller and smaller and smaller components until it's not overwhelming anymore. One little thing at a time, taking pride in your work. If you don't like something, you don't think something, do it over again. Do it 10 times. You know, do it as many times as you want. Don't worry about it. All that matters is, is this part right? For instance, I rebuilt the whole transmission on the bench and it was really, it was, it was a bear. Oh, it was hard. Every step of the way was hard. Oh man, how do I get this one bearing out? Okay, I just have one bearing to get out. No sweat. It's not like I have to rebuild the whole tranny. Well, I finally got the whole transmission together and I'm going, all right, time for a beer. I sit back and look at the tranny and right next to me, I'm seeing the distance tube that's supposed to be inside the transmission, sitting on my bench. Now I have to take the whole thing apart all over again. No big deal. It's good. The more things you take apart, the more times you take it apart, the easier it is to take apart because you don't have frozen bolts and stuff. And the more familiar you get with what you're doing. Now back in the 40s, 50s, and 60s, you know, people really took care of their cars then. You had to do maintenance to them. You couldn't afford to let your car run down. You had to show it some love. You had to develop a relationship with your car. Not anymore. So people are missing out on that joy, and, you know, that excitement of, of uh, taking care of their own car. The thing about MGBs is they're still very affordable. You can build a car ground up for the price of a new car. To me, that's a good, it's a good value. It just takes a little bit of time, and that time is really, really enjoyable. Right there, it kicks in, yeah? <laughs> See, that's an awesome engine, man. You know? It's nothing special about my engine. All MGs could be like that.